Okay, right. Okay, so everyone, microphones on mute, please. And let's get started. Um, I'll just share the screen and we'll go and have a look at the tenses like we were reviewing earlier this week. So if we remember, we were reviewing present tenses the other day. So I just want to ask, I'm just going to ask someone to remind me about tenses. So let's have Shanika, are you there? Hello, sir. Hi, Shanika. Okay, so remind me again. Present tenses, we looked at present simple and we looked at present continuous. Now, if I said to you, tell me about your routines, which tense would you use for your routines? Uh, present simple. Present simple. Okay, so give me, just give me a very quick example. I get up early in the morning. I get up early in the morning. Excellent, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And oh, yeah. And okay. I brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Then then ready for the and, work. And, and get ready. Okay. And get ready for work. Excellent. Thank you, Shanika. It's a bit loud in the background there. But okay. I ate my breakfast. Okay, Bashir, yeah. But I wouldn't like what we talked about last week was we talked about sentence structures. Now, this is fine. Okay, but when, when a, a, a ch an English child or an English speaking child learns to speak, obviously what they want to do is they want to say as many things as possible, but they don't have very complicated grammar. So what they do is they say, and, and, and. and. <laughs> so they would say things like, I want to have an ice cream and I want to go to the park and I love you, mummy, and I want to go to the moon. <laughs> yeah, so they would say, and, and, and. So, what we need to do is we need to make this a bit more sophisticated. So I get up early in the morning and I brush my teeth. Um, after that, I get ready for work and eat my breakfast. So that would sound a bit, a bit more sophisticated for me. Even though yeah. it's two sentences, it sounds a bit more mature. Okay, but the really good thing here is that we are focusing on the, the tense of the verbs. I brush, I get up, I eat. Um, I get ready. This is good. All of these are in the present simple because we're just talking about routines. Now it's the same with adverbs of frequency. So if I choose um, Mary, are you there? <coughs> Hello, sir. Hi, Mary. Just remind me again Hi. of some adverbs of frequency. Um, usually. Yeah, that's a good one. Always. It? Always, yeah. Often. Often, often, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm. Uh, regularly. Rarely, rarely. Rarely and regularly. We we seem to have a bit of a, an echo here. I'm not sure what that is. I'm just going to switch. I think it was I think it was Bashir. I've just put you on mute, okay, Bashir. Rarely, uh, regularly, yeah, okay. So there are some different, and we're not going to go into too much detail, but there's sometimes some of these words you can use in different places in the sentence. So I go to the cinema on Fridays usually. I usually go to the cinema on Fridays. On Fridays, I usually go to the cinema. We can swap these things around. But it's not very often that we would say, we wouldn't, for instance, we wouldn't say, I go to the cinema on Friday always. We wouldn't do that. So we need to be careful about these adverbs of frequency. But like with everything in, in when we learn English, we've got to learn the, the reason that we do these things so the, 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 the function of these words, and then we learn the form. Okay, so just give me a sentence, please, Mary, with, with, some, with a, an adverb of frequency. I usually mm -hmm. go to my sister's house every Sunday. Uh, okay, that's interesting, because it's almost like me saying this is a true fact. Okay. What word do we not need in this sentence? Um, okay. I think every. Uh, well, how about this one? What don't we need in this sentence, in these two sentences? Uh, <laughs> it, this is a fact. There it's should be no truth. Yeah, we, don't, we don't need true, do we? And circle? Is the circle's OK. What shape yeah. is a circle? It is. It's round, round should be. Okay. Now, in this one, 
If you start with, I usually, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. But you'd say, I usually go to my sister's house on Sunday. Okay. If you say every Sunday, then you don't need usually. Yeah. It's, just a, it's just a bit too much, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. Lots of people do that in England as well. Okay. So I go to my sister's house every Sunday or I usually, I usually go to the gym um maybe on on thursdays maybe do you go to the gym mary um just at home just at home so you do some home exercises yeah. like star yeah, jumps yeah. and things i did used treadmill. to do that but oh a treadmill well i've got an exercise yeah. bike uh, isn't it it's so boring yes usually you uh, are whenever i run on a treadmill i I try watching a movie or something to entertain me, just not yeah. to mind. That's what I do as well. Yes, I'm running here. Yeah, so what I what I usually do is I usually put the television on. I get my exercise bike in front of the television. And yeah. I say I say to myself, this program begins at eight o'clock. It finishes at 8.30. I'm going to cycle for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, yeah. But, it, but it's so boring. It really is boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Mary. Okay. So Thank we've got these. Oh, yeah. Sophia? Some, in your sentence that uh, I usually go to the gym on Thursday, mm -hmm. is it all right if we use uh, Thursdays? Yeah, it is. It means exactly the same thing. You could also say it like this on a Thursday. I know that seems strange, mm -hmm. but we can. It could be on a Thursday. It could be um, Thursdays or it could be Thursday. Every Sundays or every Sunday? No, every. That's an, uh, an important thing to learn about every. Every is always followed by a singular noun. Oh, mm. Yeah. So mm. every time, every person, every year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Okay, so present continuous. Oh, oh Hello, one more. Yeah, is... another question. Yep. Hello, Samaya. Yes, I have a question. Like, uh, there were two sentences. Um like uh, i usually go to my sister's house every sunday uh, mm -hmm. in this sentence so we can erase uh, usually or every right so yeah. uh, if we if we erase usually and uh, don't erase every is it okay yeah yeah so i th this is what we've got here i go to my sister's house every sunday that's fine or i usually go to my sister's uh, sisters not sisters, sisters. <laughs> Oh, yeah, on, on Sunday. Yeah, both of those are fine. Both of those tell us that every week that happens on a Sunday, I'm at my sister's house. It says exactly okay, the same so, thing. Uh, every or usually uh, cannot be together. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, not, it's not good grammar to repeat a meaning mm -hmm. of something in a sentence. You know, for me to say... It's something um, like overgeneralization, right? It, it's just, yeah, you're just, you're just saying something twice when you just don't need it at all. Like I said before, it's a round circle. It's a true fact. Mm -hmm. We call those truisms. You just don't need to say it. And it's not, that it's, it's not that it's awful. It doesn't change the meaning. And that's something to remember when it comes to doing exams. What they're looking for is grammar, which mm -hmm. makes it clear, you know, makes the message clear. If you make a mistake, that completely changes the meaning. So for instance, I didn't do nothing. Okay, I didn't do nothing. Well, what that actually means is I did something. Okay, what you should say is I didn't do anything. That's the correct yeah. grammar. If you say I didn't, I didn't do nothing, that means I, I did something. So something. That, that grammar mistake, changes what we understand so that's a problem people don't like that in the examiners will not like that in IELTS or OET same with okay. if you use the incorrect tense so mm -hmm. if you if you said um as we the example that we used um last week was um so here Mr. Smith sorry not yes on, on Monday Mr. Smith took warfare in for three years well that means it's finished he no longer takes it but if you say he has been taking warfarin for three years, that means he is still taking it now. So that changes the meaning. So this grammar mistake that I mentioned earlier on is just 
you know, it doesn't mean that we don't understand the situation. It's it's mm -hmm. just unnecessary. Okay. 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 I, I get it. I All get right. It. Okay. So let's move on to present continuous. So Dachani, are you there? Yes, sir. Hi, Dachani. Okay, so present continuous. Um, first of all, how do we make present continuous? Uh, being ing, verb plus ing. Yeah, exactly. That's really good. Okay, so be plus the verb plus ing. And just remind me what the verb to be is. Um, verb is uh, in the present tense. Okay, and what are the, all of the different forms of it? I... I am. I am doing. Yeah, okay. He, so um, I am, he is, she. Am, uh, is. Is. It. Is it. It is. Yeah, we. Sir? What would I say? I'd say we are. They are. Okay. You are. I'm just talking about all of the different forms. So I am. He I is. Am, uh, it is. We are. They are. You are. So it's important. A lot of people don't realize that the verb to be is the most irregular verb in English. We've got lots of different forms of it. So in the present continuous, we're only ever going to use am, is, or are. are. Because this is the present tense, isn't it? This is the present of the yes. verb to be. Excellent. Okay. So um, just tell me right now, at this very moment, what are you doing? I am learning English. Yes, excellent. I hope that's true. Yeah. Okay. So I'm learning English. Okay. Um, I am listening. I am oh. listening to Paul's sir class. Yeah. So, well, you don't have to call me Sir Paul, actually. Um, that's a very, that makes me feel very, very important. Okay. So <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to Paul um, and I am speaking sometimes. Sorry. And, and I am speaking to Paul. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So now if we think about it, sometimes I say something in the class. Okay, so this, if we look at it, these ones here, what we're saying is this is happening right now. So right now you are not speaking because I am speaking. So I wouldn't use that. I would say I am listening to Paul. Sometimes I say something in class. So this is what is happening now. Okay. Yes. And what's this? Um. That will happen uh, sometimes. Yeah, this is just the truth, isn't it? It's just a fact. It's just a general truth. So what tense is this? Sometimes I say something. It's the present simple, isn't it? So we can see the difference. If you, I know it sounds really easy um, when, we, when we go through it like this. But really, this is something that people find difficult to get their head around when they start learning the language. There are different ways of looking at the present, there are some things which are true and they are facts and they're just generally true. Horses are nice. Paul is a, a wonderful man. Uh, and then we've got things which are happening now. If you can show me that you know the difference between them, I'm impressed with your grammar, even though it seems like the most simple parts of English, but it's difficult to make a difference. Okay, thank you. So what I'd like to do today is let's move on and talk about the past. And then what we'll do tomorrow is we'll start comparing the past with the present perfect, which, as everyone knows, is a really tricky part of English. OK, so let's um, let's have a look at the past then. So I'm going to take this block here, which we looked at the other day, and I'll co copy it and we'll start to look at the past instead. OK, so. Past simple. Now, what do we use the past simple for? Hmm, I wonder if anyone can tell me. So let's choose, um, okay, Bashir. Are you there? No, Bashir. Oh yeah, you are I, Bashir? I, I, I am there, but you are putting me mute. I know, I just, I just keep hearing a, um, a, a noise in the background. Okay, so 
if you could just oh. keep it on mute and then come on when I ask. Okay, so past okay. simple. Um, so, something happened in the past. Something happened in the well, That's an easy thing to say, isn't it? Yep, something happened in the past. Sometimes English is easy, isn't it? Mm. Sometimes it's easy. So something happened in the past. Okay, now the thing that's complicated about it is that lots of things happened in the past and we don't use the past simple. So something happened in the past and not it, now it is yeah okay it we would think of it as it is finished finished yeah okay so what did you do last night uh, uh, I, I visited the cinema I, I went to the cinema okay I went yeah that's good I like that I went to the cinema cinema okay brilliant now here last night tell me what do you think this is it if you had to explain to somebody what what last night was in English, how would you explain it to somebody? Uh, uh, I, I, I watch an amazing movie. Well, no, no, I mean the phrase last night. How oh. would you explain that? If somebody said to you, Bashir, you're great at English. What do, I heard this phrase the other day, last night. What does it mean? What would you say? Um, uh, I don't know really. <laughs> Mm, I, well, I think you do, but it's a difficult thing to explain. Yes. Okay, it's the, it's the, the night of yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. So, to, so today is the, the 25th. So yeah. last night is the night of the 24th. 24th. Yeah, okay. So is yesterday finished? Yes. It's completely it finished at 12 o'clock last night. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's in the past. Okay. Yeah. And are you at the cinema now watching the film? No. Okay. Well, that means that you went to the cinema, you came back. Now you can remember it. The film is finished. Everything to do with this whole idea is completely finished and it's in the past. Yeah. Okay. So last night is what I would call a time stamp like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a time where you can say for sure in your mind that it's definitely finished. Mm -hmm. So, can you think of any others? Uh, other example? Yeah. I visited Liverpool last year. Okay, yep. So yep. So just just time stamps. Okay. Let's think of some examples. Last night, last year. That's a good one. Okay. Last week. Last week. You know what's a bit strange though? We don't say last month. <laughs> we, we don't we don't do it. Um, I don't know why, but I've never said last month or heard anyone say it. Uh, in my in my life, can you think of what we might say if uh, something happened one month before now? Um, hmm. This is um, another thing that that's really easy to learn, but it's difficult to remember. People often <laughs> say, "Before one month, I came to Liverpool," yeah. um, but we wouldn't do it. Let's see if anyone. Okay, Mary knows. Mary, can you put your microphone on? So just pop yourself back on mute, Bashir. A month ago. A month ago, yeah, a month ago. Um, okay, so when was a month ago, Mary? Last month. Well, that's not necessarily last month because we're. I suppose now because it's the twenty fifth, a month ago would be the end of um, the end of August, wouldn't it? <clears throat> but yeah. what if it was the first of or first of September today? What what would a month ago be? Uh, August. First? August the 1st, first August. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. right now, because we're around about the end of um, September, if I say a month yeah. ago, it basically means around about the end of August. But if it's the 1st of September, you couldn't say a month ago was the end of August. Oh, yeah, so a month yeah. ago, last week, okay. Um, last week, what does that mean? This is a difficult, strange yeah. phrase. Last week it's like a week ago well no it's not exactly the same no so yeah, okay. a week ago you'd think okay today is thursday today is thursday wednesday so uh, sorry today's wednesday so if you thank you very much for correcting me there a week ago <laughs> then would be last wednesday yeah so that's that's how we're more accurate about that yeah. So last week would just be any time Monday to Friday or s Saturday to Sunday. 
of the week yeah. before. Okay. Okay. So um, we've got that. We've got um So what about um what about two thousand and seventeen? Two thousand seventeen. Um, two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. Yeah. Two thousand and eighteen. One year ago. It could be. It could be one year ago, or it could be last year. If we're talking about what happened in that in that period, so this is in the period. And I'm not saying that this is a complete list, but these ones in the period. Um, and last night can be both, um, but this one a specific a specific moment, or a specific time. Last Wednesday, a month ago, one week ago, two years ago, one year ago. Last night can also go here as well. And when we, when we start to look more at the differences between past simple and present perfect, then we'll start to see how these time stamps and time phrases can become quite confusing. Um, okay, let's think about another period. Okay, so um, let me ask somebody else. Benita, are you there? Hello. I can't hear you there, Benita. Okay, well, maybe you can sort that one out. Well, I'll ask um, Nazia. Are you there, Nazia? Yes, I'm there. Hi. Hi, Hi Nazia. Um, when did you learn to ride a bike? Mm, that was in 2000. Don't say. Years ago. Oh, two years ago. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so you were an no, adult. A few, I said a few, oh, a few, few years so ago. A few years ago. Okay, yeah. so so I'm. you don't have to tell me your age, okay? But if I guessed that you were 22, for instance, that means that you, if you say a few years ago, that means around about 20, 19, 18. So were you an adult when you learned to ride a bike? Yes. Really? That's very uncommon. Most people learn to ride a bike. When? Well, uh, when I was young, I mean, I mean, when I was in school, I, I, I learned how to ride bicycle. Ah, okay. When I was young, <laughs> I learned to ride a bicycle. Now, that, that's the exact sentence that I wanted you to say. Okay. So, no, sorry, not when I was I young. When I was young, I learned to ride a bicycle. So that's interesting, isn't it? I put a there because you didn't say a bicycle and that was what was going through my mind. I need to correct that article. Interesting. Okay, so when I was young, I learned to ride a bicycle. So what's the phrase in this sentence that makes me mm -hmm. think that I should use learned and, and use the same tense here? What, what is it that makes me think I should use the past simple? and not the present and not the future. What's the time stamp? How old? Young. young. Uh, not young. It needs to be longer than that. <laughs> when I was young. So when I was young, <laughs> now I don't mm. wish to say that you're old now. Okay. But you're mm -hmm. trying to make a dip. You're trying to tell me that this is a time in your life which is now finished. So when I, you could say when yes. I was a child, that would be fine as well. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I learned to ride a bicycle. What you're telling me is that you are not a child now. So that's a time in the past, yes. isn't it? When I was a child, that's why we've used the past simple with it. And even though this seems really simple. When it comes to present perfect, which we'll look at tomorrow, which is tricky, one thing to remember is, is this time finished? If this time is absolutely finished, then, and, and the action is finished, then I should use the past simple. And learning that um, makes it really easy for you to decide, is it going to be present perfect or is it going to be past simple? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we've got these time stamps in the past. Okay, so um, let's say, um, Daciani, are you there again? Yes, sir. Can you tell me something that happened to you when you were 12? Um, 
when i when i was 12 years old um hey when i was 10 years uh, 12 years old uh, um i learned yeah i learned dancing i learned i learned to dance okay i learned to dance that's good yeah i learned to dance excellent okay is this true no no it's not true <laughs> <laughs> well you know what that doesn't matter that really doesn't matter if you know when uh, when we're practicing grammar and when we're doing exams it doesn't matter no one's going to say um uh, Dachani said she learned to dance when she was 12. Let's go and check <laughs> in the exam. No one, no one's going to do that. Okay, that's excellent. I really like it. When I was 12 years old, so here's another timestamp. Okay, um, yesterday I ate some wonderful uh, pasta. Mmm, I ate. So what we need to what we need to be able to do is one recognize timestamps. Okay, so yesterday. Um, and use timestamps and also understand the verbs. So can anyone, so Bashir, can you explain the difference to me between regular and irregular verbs? Uh, uh, Have you ever heard the difference between regular and irregular? Yeah, but I forget really now, I forget. Okay, well, I think Natia, you probably know, don't you? Yeah. Um. Regular I, and irregular. And I heard it, but I, you know, I can't just. Uh, okay, well, I, if I now say, I remember. Now I remember the, the oh, regular that, that end by ed. Mm -hmm. So the, if if we look at this one, can you tell me in these examples here we've got yeah. learned? That's regular, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, le uh, learned regular. Okay, and when went and ed irregular. Exactly. Yeah. So if I just go through some now. Now let's I go remember. and have a look. So let's have a look. We've got go, eat, fly, um, no, um, drive. swim, drive. drive. And let's do walk. Let's do want. Let's do, uh, we'll put here, we'll put this one down here, need. Okay, so if I look at all of those verbs, um, <clears throat> why, don't we, why don't we get them into a little table and we'll look at whether they're regular or irregular. So let, I'm just going to stop the Facebook stream there. So if anyone's got any questions and they want to um, join up, just let us know. Okay. Have a